Easter is a time that is considered a specifically Christian holiday. But may I submit to you that Easter is actually a time that we can all think about celebrating something miraculous. The Christian faith puts its hope in the hope of Easter, that Jesus not only died on the cross to pay for our sins, but rose from the dead to prove that he has power over death and the grave. Now, that is a specific Christian thing to say, but there is a history behind all of this because it's not just a hope, it's actually history. Now, as a trial lawyer, I would present the history, the historical case, as it were, for the resurrection to a jury in a closing argument. And what I would try to do is make it memorable. I would try like an acronym or something like that to make it more memorable. And in this case, I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna use the word CASE, C-A-S-E, as an acronym to give the four facts that almost every historical scholar agrees happened to the historical Jesus, whether they're a Christian or an atheist or whatever it might be. So the C in the case stands for crucifixion. That Jesus died by crucifixion is as sure a fact historically as any ever can be, according to John Dominic Crossan. Then we have the A in the acronym, which stands for the appearances of Jesus to the disciples. He appeared to them as the raised Jesus, not the surviving Jesus, not the escaping Jesus, but the raised Jesus. Now, the facts behind their experiences of seeing the raised Jesus are so strong that you even have skeptics like Paula Fredrickson and Gerd Ludemann and others who were saying that the disciples had some kind of experience that must have convinced them that they saw with their own eyes the risen Jesus. Now, they didn't believe something that someone else convinced them of. They had to have believed something that they either knew was false because they made it up or they knew was true because they saw it with their own eyes. They were all willing to, and in fact, many did suffer and die for their belief that they saw Jesus risen from the dead. Then you have the S in the acronym C-A-S-E, the skeptics converted, Paul and James. James was a skeptic because he thought his brother was out to lunch. He did not think Jesus was the Messiah. He thought that he had a screw loose or something. And the scripture tells us this. But after seeing the risen Jesus, James becomes not only a champion of the Christian faith, but the leader of the church in Jerusalem, the very place where all of these things were taking place. Then we have Paul. Paul wasn't just a skeptic. Paul was a persecutor of the Christian faith. He was an enemy. I can tell you as a trial lawyer, when you have an enemy who changes sides and does so at great risk to himself, you put that person on the stand and let them sing their story for the jury all day long. That's what we have with Paul. He went from a staunch persecutor of the church to an advocate for the gospel message. And the reason is, he says, he saw the risen Jesus. And then you have the E in the case that the tomb of Jesus was known and was empty three days later. We have great reasons to believe this, that the tomb was known. It's the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. Now, that's a famous person, a member of the Sanhedrin. You wouldn't make that kind of a name up if you were trying to say Jesus was buried in a tomb. You would make it anonymous so no one could verify it. But the gospel records an actual historical person's name as the one in which Jesus was buried. Then we have it empty three days later. The women followers of Jesus saw the raised Jesus. They were the first ones to see him, which gives historical credibility to the narrative all by itself. And they went and told the disciples. So they all believed, based on these four facts, that Jesus rose from the dead. And because of those four facts, preserved to us in the record of history, you and I can believe it as well. Not as a matter of mere hope. And there is a lot of hope that is in the resurrection story, but that hope actually has substance. Jesus' crucifixion was a death for all people. It was a payment for all of our sins. His resurrection was a resurrection for all people, to give life to all people. All we need but do is in respond to the invitation. Now, we spend a lot of time celebrating Christmas, and that's great. But why do we celebrate the birth of someone? Not because it happens to be just anyone. We celebrate Jesus' birth because of his death and his eventual resurrection, which leads to our rebirth. You see, Christmas makes Easter possible, but it is Easter that made Christmas meaningful. I invite you, no matter what your background might be, to consider the historical evidence for the resurrection of Christ. So maybe you'll see something that it's not just a Christian message but it is a universal message inviting all of us to come to faith and have life in him.